Like every Perth Amboyan, Thomas Monday Peterson would be well aware of his town's infamous reputation as a major slave port. During the 17th and 18th centuries, enslaved people are imported via ship from Barbados and Montserrat, as well as directly from Africa. Originally, these slaves worked the agricultural fields and supplied the hard labor required to build the colony of New Jersey. In 1762, the construction of the proprietary house commences. Slaves are brought in to level the ground, set the brownstone foundation, and haul bricks. One hundred years later, Thomas Monday Peterson's mother, Lucy, is employed here. Every household in Colonial Perth Amboy has slaves, with many as personal servants. Here, an advertisement posts a reward for a runaway enslaved servant named Violet, who is noted for being very clever. In lieu of traveling north, Violet escapes to Virginia in order to elude the search by her Perth Amboy master. There is some hope. Thomas Bartow and his young student William Dunlap are both abolitionists. That is, they are among the first in Perth Amboy to believe that slavery is wrong. Bartow is the Surveyor General for the East Jersey Proprietors, and he keeps no slaves. Dunlap frees his slaves and urges others to do the same. Within this house, during 1820, a child named Daphne is born into slavery. Her master, Andrew Bell, eventually frees Daphne, and Bell also wills her an inheritance. By 1844, Daphne marries Thomas Monday Peterson. Near the western border of Perth Amboy, the Eagleswood Phalanx is completed in 1854. This community brings the new transcendentalist ideals to Perth Amboy and becomes the main station of the Underground Railroad. Located on the banks of the old Raritan River, the Eagleswood community transports enslaved people to freedom by means of wagon, boat, and railroad. Thomas Monday Peterson is well aware of the past and present. Perth Amboy is his hometown. This is the environment Peterson lives in. A country where his race is enslaved. And a civil war brings the issue of slavery to the forefront. This is Thomas Monday Peterson's Perth Amboy. From the Parker Castle, to the hay scales, to the church spires, to the docks. Near the end of the Civil War, the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution ends slavery. The 14th Amendment requires due process before any rights can be taken away. And the 15th Amendment allows voting rights to all men regardless of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. On March 30, 1870, the 15th Amendment becomes the law of the land. This is the Carney Cottage, the place where Peterson is working on March 31, 1870. James Lawrence Carney, a descendant of slave owners and also an Eagleswood alumni, urges Peterson to go to City Hall and vote. A special election is being held for the town charter, and Carney receives word about the 15th Amendment. City Hall Circle is a hub of activity. On his way to vote at City Hall, Marcus Spring, co-founder of Eagleswood, meets Peterson near the circle. Like Carney, Spring urges Peterson to vote. The building on the right is City Hall, the way it appeared in 1870. Since 1718, Perth Amboy has enjoyed a city charter, which is the law that governs the town. Now, the citizens must decide whether to eliminate this charter or simply revise it. 
Peterson votes for a revised charter, which is also the majority tally for this election. In doing so, Thomas Monday Peterson becomes the first African American to vote under the 15th Amendment. At the end of that fateful day of March 31, 1870, Peterson walks up High Street to his home on Commerce Lane. This is the Hugh Ramsey Mansion, and partially hidden on the side is the Thomas Monday Peterson Homestead in its only known image. Peterson continues to do handyman work around his hometown of Perth Amboy. Here is a small payment made out to Thomas Monday for work on City Hall. While areas around the country put up roadblocks for black voters, the city of Perth Amboy does not. Not only does Perth Amboy encourage black voters, but in 1884 they give Peterson a gold medal for being the first to do so. As a man of integrity, Peterson requests the city officials to check the voting records of all states in order to determine that he was actually the first. The officials do so, and the results all favor Peterson. Peterson is active in civic affairs, running for town council, serving on juries and committees. Around town, Peterson is known as a fine citizen and a good man. Thomas Monday Peterson dies in 1904 and is buried in St. Peter's Church Cemetery. His story reminds us of the importance of voting. And we can continue to honor him by never taking for granted our own right to vote in each and every election. <laughs>